I'm Brian Gracely, and in this installment of our cloud computing series of videos, we're going to talk about software as a service, or SaaS. And we've talked a little bit uh, in previous videos about infrastructure as a service, IaaS. We've talked about platform as a service, PaaS. And now we're going to talk about software as a service. And this is probably the sort of layer, if you will, or type of application that most people are most familiar with when we talk about cloud computing because they're the applications that maybe they've used them within their business context but in a lot of cases they've used similar types of applications in their personal lives in their consumer sort of context so things like Google search Twitter Facebook um, all the sort of on-demand through your web browser applications that people have been using at home for a long time Flickr or other things uh, for music for photo sharing for social media those are software as a service applications. Now, there are also business versions of these that many people are familiar with as well. Salesforce.com, uh, Skype in some cases, WebEx. Um, you know, a lot of people use ADP for payroll. That's a, that's a type of software as a service. And there's many, many, many others. So let's talk about software as a service at the basic level, right? But let's, let's also talk about how it's evolving and why it makes sense to talk about it in a broader cloud computing uh, perspective. So we've talked before, you know, sort of our traditional stack where we've got, you know, hardware or infrastructure. We've got the OS um, or, you know, sort of the platform for applications. And then we've got apps, right? So apps are where software as a service, we make that analogy in a cloud computing stack, okay? So if we were going to be really looking at this from the most simple model, well, software as a service lets us go directly from the application it doesn't expose any of these underlying things to us. It doesn't tell us what kind of service it's running on. It doesn't tell us what kind of networks it's on. It really doesn't tell us a whole lot about the application environment, development environment, or anything. It just shows us the application. And it gives that to us in a way that is self-service, meaning that we just went and went to the website and uh, signed up for it. right? And it might be free. It might have a charge for it. But it's self-service. I could, I could get engaged with the application by myself. It's on demand, right? I didn't have to uh, you know, put in a request to some organization in order to be able to get a login. Uh, I just you know, logged in. I created a login. I started doing things with that application as soon as I wanted to. And um, as far as the applications were concerned, you know, the application itself, it's sort of dynamic. It doesn't know if there's going to be 5,000 people coming and accessing the application in a day or 500 or 500,000, right? So it's got to have a level of dynamic uh, resource allocation um, under the covers to be able to service things, especially when you're a public service out on the internet. Now, we're all used to you know, using software as a service as an end user. I just go directly to there via web browser. I start using the application. Uh, in many cases, it sort of has a look and feel to what I have on my desktop. But software as a service has really evolved. and it's evolved in a couple of different ways. Um, it's evolved from a model of, of how revenue came in. And in many cases, we go all the way back to sort of the quote unquote Web 2.0 days, back to 2000, 2001, 2002, when Web 2.0 was the, the buzzword and the terminology. And really what that meant was a lot of startup companies were able to turn up software as a service applications, and they were paid for in one of two ways. One was they were ad supported, so they would put ads all over the website. You'd have some sort of ad interaction uh, with the application or at least, you know, sort of around you and people would, they sort of pay their bills that way. Or they supported a model that was called freemium. Freemium being uh, a percentage of their users were using the service for free and they would get a, a subset of all the features that were available and that might be 60, 70, 80, 90 percent of their users were using it for free. They were using the, the good enough version of the application. And then there was sort of the premium. So you have free plus premium, you get that term freemium. And that might have been 5%, 1%, 10, 20%, but a much smaller portion. And they were willing to pay uh, for the premium features, the premium functionality, more storage, more content, more sessions they could interact with. Um, and that's sort of how software as a service got started. It got started. Um, uh, as a public service, uh, different ways for people to pay for it. Um, some were ad-supported, some were freemium.
But where it really evolved to and where software as a service becomes very, very interesting is that it's not just about one application anymore. It's about the way that applications get linked. And if so if you, whether that's the evolution we've had with social media and, and how people want to be interconnected to their applications as they go across the web. They want their applications to know more about them, to personalize the service for them, to give them recommendations on what to do, to show them what their friends are doing or business colleagues are doing. And so software as a service has really evolved to be much more than just uh, one person or a group of people interacting with your application. It's also, here's your SaaS application, and we'll just call it X. When you're interacting with that SaaS application, whether it's WebEx or whether it's Facebook or whether it's whatever it might be, behind the scenes, through APIs, it's interacting with dozens, if not hundreds, of other applications all over the internet at any given time. And that's really how SaaS has evolved. It's gone from being sort of a, a single application to doing a couple things, right? It, it's interacting with lots of other APIs, which are other applications, application Y, Z, ABC, all these different services. Maybe they're ads, maybe they're uh, data collection services, maybe they're recommendations, maybe they're social media over here with uh, you know QRS and something right here might be whatever. But the other thing that they're starting to do is they're starting to realize that some users, some sophisticated users and businesses, they would love to be able to tap into some of the underlying services that live underneath the SaaS. And, you know, they want to be able to get at the platform. And we're seeing this with companies like Google and Facebook and Salesforce.com and WebEx and a lot of these very robust SaaS applications are beginning to expose a little bit of their underlying platform as a service, right? They're allowing applications that a customer might write to natively sort of take advantage of some of the underlying services or some of the underlying application characteristics. So SaaS is sort of an evolving model. It's evolving in really two or three ways. One, um, we're seeing it become more mainstream as a, some cases core to people's business, some cases context. We're seeing it evolve in terms of how many APIs and how many uh, you know, ways that it interacts with um, external services to deliver very, very robust services. So it's not just one application, it's really a mashup of many applications. And we're seeing it begin to sort of drift down and blur the lines between what's a SaaS and what's the underlying paths that may be exposed for businesses that want to interact with this. And the companies that run software as a service, whether those are all the companies that we name plus many, 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 many others, they would love for businesses to do more and more business with their platform, with their software as a service, and through this ecosystem of partners that they interact with via APIs. And so software as a service is an area that's very easy for businesses to get engaged with. Um, it's opening up its doors in terms of how developers can get engaged with and the communities work around it. Um, and it offers various types of, of billing models, whether they are free, uh, mostly OpEx, or some that are, that are gonna allow you to have longer term relationships with them um, and, and have different pricing models. So that's kind of where software as a service is today and where it's evolving. Um, for most businesses, it's a portion of how they deliver IT services. Um, and it's an area that we see you know, evolving very, very quickly just as fast as, as every other area within cloud computing. So it's important to understand the context of what's infrastructure as a service, what's its value. It's about delivering virtual machines or server resources and infrastructure resources. For, and that may be a great piece of what you need to do for IT services. There's platform as a service, trying to develop a new way to develop you know, your own application. And there's software as a service, which is purely about consumption and purely about doing things with applications without having to think about them. Somebody else manages them for you. Somebody else takes care of them for you. And you just simply consume them as needed. And they're beginning to evolve into a way that allow you to have more robust applications. So, Hopefully that sums up software as a service for you. Hopefully this has been useful for you. Thank you for your time and thanks for watching.